In this video, I'm gonna show you how I orient my 3D prints to get better finishes and to make support removal cleaner and easier. Let's do it. Hi everyone, I'm Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. When I'm working with a print that requires supports, before I even think about support settings or anything like that, I think about how I'm gonna orient this print. A print orientation is a part of the 3D printing world. It might seem uh, really obvious if you're new or if you have experience with this type of tech or just get this sort of thing. But at least for me, there was a lot more to consider than I initially thought that came with experience and with time. In some cases, the way it oriented the print led to subpar results that uh, ended up making me more frustrated than I think I needed to be if I'd known some of the things I'm sharing with you in these videos. Let's answer this basic question first though. Why should you care about how a model is oriented? Well, for starters, sometimes uh, when you pull a model off of Thingiverse or from anywhere really, it's, it's not always in a good orientation for printing on your printer. Normally the purpose of orientation is to get a specific quality from a print. The most common in our hobby and in our niche of 3D printing minis and terrain is that the modeler made the sculpt to print without support but you do need to print with a specific orientation. Normally it's standing up. You know, or maybe you want parts of the model to have more strength, so you print them horizontally. Like for example, you'd print a model on its back if it has like a spear or sword, and you uh, want that part to have more strength and less risk of breaking. You can also print a model vertically, i.e. standing up, in order to take advantage of the greater accuracy in the Z-axis and the greater resolution. But none of this matters if your prints fail badly enough or you break so much of your mini that you know you can't repair it because of where the supports ended up getting placed. And so again, just to, to emphasize this point and bring it home, in my experience, how I orient the mini is kind of the first step in making sure I have an overall successful print as opposed to something like my exact support settings, right? This is completely separate from regular settings, which are the guaranteed biggest factor in the success of an overall print, my opinion at least. If you keep certain things in mind and you consider again some of the trade-offs that we'll walk through throughout the video, uh, good orientation is gonna allow you to generate support in a way that leads to, to easier cleanup, to make a cleaner finish. Uh, it's easier to remove. And third, that it's less likely to fail. Let's start with reorienting your mini to make it cleaner. And what I mean by cleaner is that there's as little support material left after you do your support removal as possible. I'll use uh, this torso of our ice dragon, i.e. the Father Frost, as an example. There's no way to print this model without slicer generated supports. And the three general ways that I could orient this model are horizontally at like an angle, usually it's about 45 degrees or so, and completely upright or, or vertically. Printing horizontally would allow these crystals to print without supports, but so much of the chest hair and front of the dragon would be supported that this probably wouldn't be the best orientation in my opinion. And the reason I say that is because cleanup is going to be really difficult because of the waviness and the detail of the areas that are being supported. Printing at something like a 45 degree angle is better. Okay, some of these crystals still won't need supports and at least the top part of the chest hair won't need supports this way but the bottom part of the chest hair still needs supports and some of these back crystals will also need supports. Finally, printing this torso piece vertically. The bottom part where the tail goes and some of the hind legs where most of the supports will go with this orientation. And the advantage to this orientation is that supports uh, are mostly in areas that you won't see on the table. Uh, so I'm okay with a little rougher texture on the bottom with this orientation. You'd also get a much, much cleaner chest hair area but some of the back and the crystals are now gonna need some extra cleanup. Is this still an advantage in my opinion? Because sanding down a crystal edge is just way easier than sanding down something like the chest hair area, which has all these curves and, and waves. So for the person that wants to sand everything down and have a perfect finish, this is probably gonna be the best orientation. On my own ice dragon, I chose to print it at a 45 degree angle because I felt that the support marks left on the chest would actually work to my benefit and look kind of like hair. And I also didn't want to run the risk with the isolated supports. Looking back on that, 
I probably should have printed it vertically just to minimize that support scarring as I call it later on. You know, I didn't spend very much time doing real cleanup on this model. But again, looking over this, these are things that I would consider and I pretty much consider all the time. And I always have to kind of make those trade offs. Now let's talk about orientation that makes support removal easier or, or safer. I'm not talking about the exacto knife kind of safety. I'm talking about orienting a print so that certain parts of the print are stronger and so that certain parts of the print are easier to remove. Now here is one of our Dragonborn minis. It's an ice captain. Normally I just stand my minis up straight, but uh, just looking at him, he has a cape and capes, at least in my experience, are often failure points on minis because they're this big kind of independent floating mass on a mini. And the other thing I'm noticing is that leaving him standing up straight would make removing all of the support material from between the mini and his cape kind of difficult. So again, that's just been my experience. If I wanted to be safe or if I wasn't sure about this, I'd have him angled backwards. This way when I remove the support, the support material is all connected. So removing it in a big chunk is gonna be easier and it's definitely gonna be cleaner. You just have to be careful when you're removing supports though. Uh, but this gives me much better view of what I'm removing in areas like this so that if I see something is kind of getting weak or starting to bend in a way that I think it's gonna be breaking soon, I can kind of slow down and I can snip it or do something that can kind of prevent that if possible. And if I print it straight up, sometimes I don't have that visibility or if I print it backwards, um, I have other issues that we'll talk about later. This angled orientation works really well and goes with my first point, again, about having cleaner finishes because there's no support being generated in the front in this orientation, except for that mouth cavity, which means you're gonna get a much cleaner look. And that's before doing any post-processing because the front and the back of the mini haven't been touched. It's literally just the parts in between and that are covered in the mini. So that's very good when you're talking about this type of print. This principle definitely works for resin printing too. You know, I decided to orient the Magma Captain the same way for a different reason. No support marks on the front of the Mini and I can sand the smooth cape texture, which is much easier than sanding something like, you know, plate armor that has fine lines on it. So even though the support marks are really obvious here with this orientation, I still did this intentionally to hold up all the floating parts of the Mini, but also because it would make sanding that part so much easier than it would be armor like i mentioned now let's talk about orienting a mini to prevent failures over time you're going to see you know, your automatically generated supports and you're going to start to develop what i call a support sense you're going to recognize you know this is probably going to fail let's use another real life danny experience this uh, ice dragon head that i showed in my last video talking about supports i want the face to have as much detail as possible and be as clean as possible because it's gonna be one of the highlights of this model. So let's look at our three basic orientations one more time. Printing it horizontally would need lots of support in the mouth, which can get really ugly if the model has a tongue or something like that. Uh, but the good thing is, this is probably the safest orientation for the horns. At an angle, well, auto supports aren't even picking up some of the horns. And my experience tells me that this will fail unless I add manual supports to this as is. Um, and also this will still need supports in the mouth. If I print it vertically, the mouth no longer needs supports, which is a really good thing. But this kind of thin buildup, as you can see here at the bottom, uh, it's prone to failure in my experience. And again, zooming in, I'll definitely need to add custom supports either in Kira or Simplify 3D or Mesh Mixer so that these overhangs that weren't picked up by auto supports won't fail. Now, depending on your confidence in your printer and your settings and your level of experience, uh, I think any of these orientations would work for this model. But I'll tell you what I chose. I chose to print this model vertically because I didn't want supports in the mouth. I should have done this exercise before trying it myself. And here's my result. Uh, a piece of my horn is missing. And this happened because again, if you look at it, there was no support on it. And uh, you know the rest of the story. <laughs> so if you're wondering how I fixed this, in Cura, I disabled automatically drop models to the build plate, and then I literally raised the model a little bit. And now Cura builds these supports underneath it that I know are much less likely to fail. Most folks would probably just use custom supports instead. Now I wanna take a practical example that kind of combines everything all in one, and we'll use a dragon wink for this. Whether you're printing one of uh, Miguel Zavala's dragons or whether you're printing one of our lost dragons, I apply all these concepts to these dragon wings that require printing separately that don't print all in one body. Here's our red guardian left wing. Okay, let's assume the wing comes the way it would for assembly standing up. 
right? Now here it is after I reoriented it. Uh, notice the orientation I have it in. The wingtips won't need any support because they're upright. And the very thin, fragile bottom tips of the wing membrane are also not touching any supports. And yes, the back of the wing is supported and will probably need a little bit more sanding, but this relatively flat surface is something I'd much rather prefer to clean up than you know, risk losing a wing nail or my print failing completely because it was being supported on a much thinner surface, like the bottom of the wing brain, for example, which is why I mentioned that earlier. And here's what it looked like only after support removal, very little cleanup. Wasn't so bad. <laughs> and now you're good to go. As time goes on, you're gonna intuitively learn what works for your printer, what orientations are best, what support settings work, what will or what won't fail more often in your personal experience. I hope this video has helped support orientation become an additional tool in your personal quest to have less minis fail and have more successful, clean and better quality minis. If you wanna see my workflow for a different mini with supports, check out this video. Thank you for watching, happy printing and happy gaming.